I, uh, I got a 3D printer. I want to show you how uh, things go from a computer model on the computer to a 3D printed object. A 3D printer has two main parts. This is the control box, and this is the printing bed right here. This is a little card uh, that I use to um, bring the model from the computer to the 3D printer. Alright, so here's the first step, modeling something with a computer. Um, I've used uh, sophisticated, expensive 3D modeling software like 3D Studio Max, but uh, I don't have those anymore, so I'm going to use a simple 3D modeling program that's available free on the web called Tinkercad. Uh, as soon as you sign in, it looks like this. It saves your old design, your old 3D modeling designs. And I'm going to create another one right now to print right now. This is the work plane, and these are the different objects you can use to model stuff. I'm just going to bring some spheres onto this work plane. A small one, a medium one, and a large one. Actually, I'm going to do two of these little ones. One here, and one over here, like that. Uh, I'm going to give it a flat. I want to give it a flat bottom, and the easiest way to do that is to cut the bottom off with a transparent box. The transparent block, uh, box at the bottom will be subtracted from this group of balls at the top when I group them together with this key. So now the bottom should look like this. It should have four flat circles where the rounded bottoms used to be. Alright, I like this shape, so I'm going to export it. I'm going to uh, download an STL file. Now that STL file doesn't go directly into the 3D printer. The 3D printer takes a, uh, a more complicated kind of uh, instruction set called G-code. Uh, Tinkercad automatically names your models. So this one was uh, named Super Miguelo Blad and the STL file is saved here. I already opened uh, a second set of software called a Slicer. This one is called Cura. It's free, I think, and it takes the 3D model and uh, slices it, which means it describes it in thin layers of um, plastic extrusion stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to pull this uh, Super Miglo Vlad into Cura. All right, here it is in Cura. Now this will calculate how long it's going to take to print at this size. Five hours. It'll use 42 meters of plastic filament which is 126 grams of filament. And that sounds just great to me. Let me just check the size. This says it's going to print 
117 millimeters across, 117 millimeters tall, and 68 millimeters, or sorry, 78 millimeters wide. That sounds good. Uh, now I'm going to save the toolpath to this little card. All right, so it was saved as Super Miguelo Blad G Code. And I'm going to take it over to the 3D printer now and start printing. All right, so here's the 3D printer again, and here's the card. There's a little slot for the card here in the side of the control box. Um, I use a extension for the uh, for the card because this part of this printer is a little bit delicate. So uh, the card goes in there, and I'm going to turn it on in a second. It'll start heating up so it can get ready to print. Uh, here are some colors of uh, filament that I have in my collection. Um, these. Are, they start off as one kilogram each of filament, and they're um, about 15 bucks uh, per kilogram, but sometimes they're as little as $10 per roll. Uh, we're going to print the, uh, our model with this clear filament, and it just gets loaded into the side. A 3D printer kind of works like a um, hot glue gun. And this filament is like the hot glue. Uh, there's a hot nozzle that the plastic is melted. The plastic's melted and then it's forced through the, the uh, nozzle and uh, onto this plate where it cools down and becomes hard plastic again. I'm gonna um, print the super wall off G code. So it, two things are heating up right now, this, uh, the bed of it, and the nozzle here. Uh, 3D printer has a bunch of different motors on it. It's got this motor, all well, the heads here. It's got this motor, which tells this part where to go back and forth on this belt. It's got this motor, which pushes this bed back and forth, and it's got a motor down here that controls a z-axis to move uh, the printhead up and down as it gets the instructions from the chip. It's also got a motor here which uh, feeds uh, like a little knurled bolt to push the filament in this white tube down to the head. So it's got four motors which are controlling where the plastic ends up. And where it's going to end up is here in a 3D model that's sitting on this bed. The control box will say uh, what the temperature is at and what it's, what it's trying to reach. Uh, I think the, the bed is heating up to 40 degrees Celsius and uh, the uh, little nozzle is heating up to 220 degrees Celsius. But it won't take long. Are you on this? Yeah. There's uh, it says, um, here's the temperature of the nozzle, here's the temperature of the bed. The bed's up to 44 degrees already, and the nozzle's up to 58 degrees. It also shows you a readout for the side fan over here, which cools down the plastic before it dumps it out, and uh, the coordinates that the printhead thinks it's at. Sometimes the plastic has trouble sticking to this glass, even though it's the right temperature. So I'm going to put down some strips of um, masking tape to help uh, hold it down once the plastic, the hot plastic hits it.
when it starts printing, it'll orient the print head here. It'll make sure that it's at the uh, it's pegged at the top of the bed and at the um, leftmost side of the bed and at the very bottom that this is all the way down. And then it'll start printing. Uh, it'll do a test dot here and then it'll start printing in the middle of the bed, usually. This is this is a technology that's a few years old, so it's not as refined a process as printing something on a 3D printer, or sorry, on a regular paper printer. But uh, these rolls of filament and the printing process, it's not held by um, trademark holders, so you're not going to have an issue with like $50 print cartridges with the 3D printer, so that's kind of nice. How far away is the, the correct heat? It's at the correct heat. <laughs> All right. For a time. So the process starts, it just starts tracing the outline of the very first layer, and then it'll fill in the outline of the first layer. After about five minutes, you'll be able to tell this is a slow process. But luckily it's also automatic, so you don't have to wait around for it to happen. Alright, here's the printout of the, uh, of the model after an hour and 47 minutes. It is 43 millimeters tall at this point. A little more than halfway done. This is about halfway done printing. I'm gonna pause it and uh, drop in this multicolored light. Actually, all the printing is, all the lights are facing the same direction right now. I guess that's as good as we're going to get. After three hours and 
three minutes, this uh, the plastic balls are finished. While it was printing, I put some uh, lights inside. It printed the balls completely shut, and uh, so the lights are still going in there. The platform's heated up so that the plastic sticks pretty well, even after it's uh, done cooling. So this is a um, kind of unusual in that uh, it's a sealed light now, and I don't have any way to turn this off, but it's just two batteries inside. So that went from uh, computer design on my screen to a, a real physical object that I'm holding in my hands, and it's the best thing ever. It's really easy. Uh, this machine is the Creelty CR10. It was $500, and this is about uh, 10 cents worth of plastic, I think. That's it. Cut. Thank you. Catch. Broke open. <laughs> that would be kind of a bummer. But I was really after it. Okay, Gina, well done.